Okay, we're going to go over some of the features uh, and setup of the Nexus BACnet lighting controller. So I'll just quickly go around and point out the different ports. The yellow yellow spring-loaded dinkle connection here at the bottom is the 24 volt DC input. It is not polarity sensitive, so it doesn't matter which side positive and negative go on. Uh, next we have the options dip switches and we also have below that the MSTP RS45 BACnet address dip switches and the way these work you'll see that they're numbered 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and 128. That's the value of each dip switch. So if we want MSTP address number 1 we turn on address number 1. If we want address number 2 we just want dip switch number 2 on. And if we want address 3, we would turn on dip switch 1 and dip switch 2. So it's the value of the dip switches added together gives you your address. And so on as you move up uh, through the addresses. The next um, port is our smart switch ports. We have a 2-wire smart switch port and a 5-wire smart switch port for our 5-wire devices and for our 2-wire devices. Next to that, we have an RJ45 uh, Ethernet jack, and this goes to our firing cards, so to relay firing cards or dimming modules. And next to that, we have the BACnet RS485 MSTP port. So we have positive, negative, and ground. It's red, black, green uh, for RS485 communications. And above that, this area here is our soft patch area. This is where you can do programming for the controller. And across the top here is eight uh, contact closure inputs uh, used to control various lights or things if you would like. <clears throat> so we'll go over a couple of the commonly used options dip switch. The first one is options dip switch number seven. This is for discovering uh, new devices on the controller. So once you have all of your smart switch devices, your wall stations and sensors, and your relay firing cards, etc. attached, what you'll do is turn on dip switch number seven, and you'll see already we have discovered um, stations number one through four. So we'll want to press the discover clear button. So we'll press that, it'll clear everything out, and it'll go out on the network and discover all the devices. So we'll see what it, we discovered four input devices and our two relay firing cars that are connected. So after that's complete, you turn off dip switch number seven. And then to complete the process, you'll want to power cycle the unit. So. <clears throat> All right, we'll just pull off power and back on. And what this does on, a, on the power up, the Nexus controller rebuilds the BACnet object database. So if you've added or removed any objects, then on power up, it will go out and build the object database for all the binary inputs and binary outputs and analog value objects, etc., and stuff. So the next commonly used dip switch would be um, dip switch number eight, and this is what enables the contact closure inputs if you're going to use them. So all you have to do is turn on dip switch number eight, and then once you do that, you'll need to discover those inputs. So again, we'll go through the process. You turn on dip switch number seven and press your clear discover button, and the eight contact closure inputs will always show up as station number 16. So now our eight contact closure inputs are enabled. So we can turn off dip switch number seven and to complete the process, again, we would, we would power cycle the unit for all the objects to show up. So next, uh, we'll go over the soft patching or programming area. To get started, all you need to do is just press the station button. So for now, if we say we wanted to program station one button one, so you press your button until you get to the station you'd like to program. We're going to do station one and as well for the, the button LEDs, uh, we'll do button one. So you'll leave it on button one. And we want board number one, and we'll do relay number one. 
as well. So you set those four parameters across the top and then you set the action that you would like it to do. So currently we'll, we'll just say button one on station one, we want to cycle the relay. So you don't have to do anything to save. You just, once you make the setting, it'll be active and and that process complete. So if you have additional stations you want to program, you would go to your next station, you'd select the button number that you want, and you would select your output board number for relay or dimmer board, and then you would select the, the output number that you wanted to control, and then go down and select your... I have to go to an available output here because it won't let me go through the options. Then you can go through your action of what you want to do, whether you want an on command, off command, cycle command, etc. So, and to exit that menu, you just, just leave it alone and it'll time out after uh, 20 to 30 seconds and the LEDs will go out. The other option that you would use, if you press and hold the station button, this is used to clear out all of your programming. So if you want to clear any programming and, and start fresh, if you press and hold, the LEDs will start to light up. If you let off the button ahead of time, nothing nothing happens. But to do a full clear, press and hold the station button until all the LEDs cycle all the way to the top and then go out. And now all our programming is clear and you can start fresh.